Welcome to another episode of the Metal Matt Podcast. I am your host, as always, Metal Matt. In today's episode, we are finally, for today's episode, we're finally going back to a, a movie review. Haven't done one of those in a while. Because I sort of, like, um, took a break from movies after Rock of Ages. But I decided to go ahead and do one movie review. And, um... So, today, it will be Marat. Yeah, I'm finally going to take a look at a Kevin Smith film on the podcast today, so it should be tons of fun. Uh, anyway, for, before we go any further, let's go ahead and do some shout-outs. First of all, Chucky's Playground, great place to be. Um, awesome place to be. We've been pretty active the past couple of um, days. And I've just been, it's an amazing place to be, it really is. No, really cool people there. No, always talking about stuff, Chucky related, non Chucky related, so it's a lot of fun. So definitely check it out. And Movie Mayhem with Spanky and G, they just recently did a um episode on um on Radio Fire. I, I believe that was the name of it. And um it was a pretty good episode, you know. It was really, really good. You know, I always enjoy listening to Movie Mayhem, so definitely check them out as well. And so now it's time to look at Marat. And um, for those that don't know, I'm I'm actually a pretty big Kevin Smith fan. Um, specifically his um, View Askew Nurse films, you know, the sort of like his first few films, you know, um, Crooks, um, Marat, Jason, Chasing Amy, Dogma, Jane Simon Bob, Strike Back, Crooks, too, you know, uh, those kind of films. And so I really like those films, and I've been meaning to do a uh, a Kevin Smith film on the podcast for a while, um, but I could, never really could figure out which movie I wanted to do, you know, because I was always like, should I do Crooks 2, or should I do Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, but I ended up deciding to do Mallrats 2, uh, Mallrats, um, because there's actually going to be a sequel coming out, I believe, next year. So, um, I decided what better time to do a podcast on it than here, right now. So, it, it takes place the day before Crooks, and that's what I love about some of Kevin Smith's films. And uh, these are the View Ask You Know films that I mentioned just uh, a minute ago. And they all take place in, like, the same universe. And, uh, they end up, um, Julie Dwyer ends up, um dying um, due to a swimmer-related death, and that's actually mentioned in Quirks. Um, you know, uh, they in, it's end up mentioning it, and I think uh, Dante and Randall end up actually um, invading the funeral. And we don't know exactly what happens, though, thanks to an animated um, kind of um, scene on um, anniversary DVD slash Blu-ray, we end up figuring out exactly what happened, and it's really funny, if you can find it, check it out, but, um, anyway, so that's mentioned, and, um, it, the, it begins with T.S. Quint, who's played by Jeremy London, and, um, Brandy, and T.S. is preparing for a trip to Florida, because he plans to propose to, uh, um, Brandy and Universal Studios, specifically on the Jaws ride, <laughs> which is pretty funny. But uh, they end up breaking up because uh, she volunteers to fill in as a contestant on um, her father's dating game show, Truth or Date. And his best friend, Brody, who's played by Jason Lee, and you might know him from, you know, a bunch of stuff. Like, he played um, Banky and um, Chase and Amy and Jane Son Bob Strike Back, which is a, two of Kevin Smith's films. Uh, he also played Earl in My Name is Earl. And uh, he was the voice of Syndrome and in Incredible. So he's been in a lot of stuff. And um, he ends up breaking up with his girlfriend, Renee, as well. Uh, Shane, who's played by Shannon Doherty. Um, from Beverly Hills 90210 or something like that. He, it's some type of um, teen drama one. I'm not really too sure what the name of that is. Uh, but I'm about to find out. Let's see here. Yeah, it was Beverly Hills 90210. Okay. So, anyway, they end up having an argument at the, in the Brody and T.S. meet up and then decide to got, kind of get over it at the local mall. And uh, I think they're kind of mall rats. And a mall rat is basically someone who, they sort of loiter around the mall and uh, never really have the intent of buying anything. 
And uh, they end up discovering that Truth or Date is being from the same mall. And um, they find that out through Willem, who's played by Ethan Supley, and he's been in a few other um, Kevin Smith films as well, specifically Kirk's too. And, and he, and interestingly enough, he actually played um, uh, Earl's brother in um, My Name is Earl as well, alongside Jason Lee. So that's uh, a really interesting casting, uh, I think. But um, and throughout the entire movie, he he keeps staring at this uh, this poster, in which you can see a sailboat. I'm not sure what exactly what's called. But um, the entire movie, he tries so hard to find it. He can never find it. But um, they end up asking Jane, Simon, Bob, who's just there for no reason at all. And they end up destroying the show stage. And throughout the film, they come up with all these elaborate plans to uh, evade Will Fours, who is like the... Um, who's a pretty vicious and notorious security guard at the mall. And um, they end up doing all these kinds of plans that are really funny, but they end up failing. And e and every time they fail, Silent Bob always ends up accidentally crashing through the same uh, dre through her dressing room, and it's always the same girl every time. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I think that's what makes the movie very entertaining is because um, Jay and Silent Bob they have a bit. They have a bit of a bigger role this time, uh, rather than Quirks too. I'm um, in Quirks because in Quirks, you know, they're, they're just sort of there throughout the movie. I'm not sure exactly how much time they have, but um, it's not a lot. It's basically cameos, basically. But um, yeah. So they end up having a bigger role in here, and their scenes are really more slapstick than anything else, you know. If, um, you know, Brody and T.S. scenes are really more like, you know, the conversations that they have, interesting conversations that they have, you know, it's Jane, Tom, and Bob are really more slapstick than anything else, but it's really good slapstick. I dare say they're the best part of it. And then, and Brody ends up finding out that Renee, Renee is now in a relationship with Shannon, with Shannon, played by Ben Affleck, and he's the, um, a clothing store manager. Not sure what it's called. I'm trying to remember. Can't remember very well. It's some type of clothing store. We're up in the mall, and uh, he ends up hating Brody because of his lack of a shopping agenda. You know, he just sees him as a mall rat. You know, like I was saying earlier, how they never really have intent on buying anything. They just order there at the mall, like they live there or something. And this might have been Affleck's first. Role. I'm not sure if it was his first. I know it was one of his first, for sure. And uh, obviously, since then, he's become a really big actor. Uh, personally, I'm not really a big um, Ben Affleck fan. I, I don't know. I just never really cared much for his acting. But he, he does play the jerk well in uh, this film. But um, Brody ends up getting attacked by Shannon later on. And he tend and he wants to have sex with Renee in a very uncomfortable place. But, and, and as a running gag, they keep referring to it as like the back of a Volkswagen. <laughs> Which is pretty funny, you know. But, um, Jane, Simon, and Bob, they, they think that the Easter Bunny attacked Brody for some reason. So they end up attacking the Easter Bunny. <laughs> and like, that's a really funny scene in itself. And then Mr. Sming, I think that's his name, and he's aware of brilliant T.S. at the mall, and he's trying to make sure that nothing goes wrong for the dating show and stuff like that. And Brody ends up getting advice from Stan Lee, of all people, and uh, he was mentioned that he was visiting the mall earlier because he's doing a comic book signing, and um, he ends up, and it's a really good scene, and... Um, Brody ends up asking about all these superheroes, and uh, very interested in their um, nether re regions. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they end up like um, they end up getting the two contestants stoned, and then uh, Brody and T.S. replace them on Truth or Date. And the third one, um, Gil Hicks, which is interesting because. 
um, Gil Hicks is related in some way to um, Dante from uh, Crooks 1 and Crooks 2. I think they're supposed to be brothers or something. I really don't know. But th they're both played by the same actor who played Dante. So it's really interesting. And just Brody, just hilarious uh, in this one. Just constantly telling weird stories like he tells um, a story one time about how... Um, like how his cousin um, did did the deed in um, in a, on an airplane, but they thought it was all going down. And it, he also tells a story or at the beginning of the film how he sticks a cat up his butt to get a gerbil out. Like it's just kind of weird. And I think um, Brody and Randall from Crooks also are also cousins, so which might kind of explains a lot. But um. So he ends up spending all day trying to win her back. And uh, T.S. finally wins Brainy back. And Brody is just assault, verbally assaulting Gil throughout the entire thing. And it's just hilarious, you know. So they end up playing some sex tape of Shannon and Trisha. And Trisha was this 15-year-old um, high school senior who was doing a book on the sex drive of men. And uh, they end up, and Shannon gets up and arrested for a statutory rape. And the brilliant Renee end up getting back together. And there's also a conclusion, kind of similar to Animal House, how, um, uh, tells how everybody went. T.S. Mary's Brandy on the Jaws ride. Trisha's book is a bestseller, and it ends up becoming a movie that comes out that Christmas. And the Wilm finally ends up seeing the sailboat. Brody ends up becoming the host of the Tonight Show. Uh, of all people. And Jay and Son and Bob end up shown with a monkey named Suzanne. And that ends up getting explained in Jay and Son and Bob Strike Back, which is really interesting. And that, I think that's another movie that I'm going to do, uh, that I'm going to do on the show uh, in the future because I'm, I really love that movie very much. So uh, we'll definitely see about that. So that's pretty much a um, mall rat. Not too much to say. It's pretty laid back. It's pretty easy going. Um, real, I really like this one. You know, it's probably one of my favorite Kevin Smith movies. You know, it's right up there with some of my Kirks too or Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, pretty funny, honestly, and uh, just really easy going. You know, not too many. Like there, there are a lot of. I guess subplots going on there, but not too many, really. And uh, just really entertaining all throughout. Jay and Son and Bob are awesome here, you know. And uh, brilliant TS again, like very likable, you know, guys. You know, Shannon, you know, Ben Affleck is just that kind of that jerk that you, you just love to hate, you know. Um, so really, all the characters are really kind of well written, you know. So, overall, that's pretty much Mallrats. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Highly recommend it. Um, really see all of Kevin Smith's um, You Ask You Nurse movies. Because, um, you know, those are really awesome. You know, I'd say check out Jay and Silent Bob, Strike Back, Crooks 2, and this one, Mallrats. I think those are his three best films. So, that's all for the Melmet Podcast. And I'll see you all next time.